welcome to another video in this Linux or Programmers tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering shell scripts. Now, shell scripts are a way to actually execute shell commands within a script. So you can think of it just like any other script that you might write in, say, a programming language like Python, except instead of having Python syntax, you're having shell syntax. So you can still implement things like loops, if statements, uh, conditions, you can have statements that execute and expressions that evaluate, and I'm going to be showing you most of that in this video. Regardless, shell scripts are good to know, and as a programmer, you should definitely have an idea of how they work and at minimum be able to read them. All right, so let's dive in here. The first thing I want to show you how to do is just make a shell script. So when I say shell script, all I'm talking about is a file that has shell script syntax inside of it that allows you to actually execute that file and then have these commands run. So let's create a really basic one. I'm going to use nano as my editor here, but feel free to use Vim, Emacs, whatever you would prefer. Uh, you just have to make sure you type the same thing that I am. So first of all, we need to make a shell script file. Now all shell files or all shell scripts, whatever you want to call them, end in .sh. So after my nano command, I'll just type test.sh, and this is going to be our first script. Uh, let's go ahead and press enter. All right, so now we're in nano and the first thing that we need to do in our shell scripts is we need to add what's actually called a shebang. Now, I think this is a hilarious name, but this is actually the name of it. And what this is, is a pound sign, an exclamation point, and then the name of the shell that you want to run this file in. So you don't really have to understand this, but we're just going to do slash bin slash bash. And what we're saying is that we want to use bash to run this file. So whenever you make a shell script, you're usually supposed to at the very top tell the shell script by adding this little comment here, what shell you want to run this in. Now there's multiple shells. Bash is just the most common one and the one that we've been using. And well, that's the one that we want to run this script in. So again, that's called a shebang. You always add that at the very top of your file and 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be exactly what I have right here. Now, the next thing I'll show you is just how you actually write a comment in this shell script. So a comment is simply a pound sign like I just did above and then whatever you want. Anything that is after a pound sign is not going to be executed in your script. So think of this like any other comment that you would see in any programming language. It's just this is how you do a comment. Now, some people may be confused that our uh, shebang was actually a comment, but since we have this exclamation point, it kind of differentiates it. So that's kind of the main difference. All right. So now that we have that, let's write a really basic script. All I want to do here is just echo some things out to the screen. So I'm going to say echo and we're going to go with our classic example of hello world exclamation point. Then I'm going to type echo and just hi. Now, anything that you can write in your regular command line. So in the Linux terminal, in, in bash, you can write inside of here. So I can type ls hyphen l, right? Or ls hyphen a or whatever. I, I can type all these commands here and they will just execute as a script. So when I run this file, all the commands that I type will execute. So let's just start out really basic with some echoes. So we're going to have our two echoes there. I'm going to exit. And now I will show you how to run the shell script. So to run the shell script, you're going to type dot slash and then the name of the script, which in our case is going to be test dot sh. Now notice that when I try to do this, we get permission denied. Why are we getting permission denied? We're the root user. We should have permission to do everything. Well, the reason we're getting permission denied is because if we have a look at this file, I believe it's ls hyphen l and then we say test dot sh, we can see that we do not have execute privileges on this file. So what we are trying to do is execute this file. So what we need to do is add the permission to execute this file. So what we'll do is we'll say chmod plus x and then we will say the file name, which is test dot sh. So now that I do this, let's have a look at the permissions and we can see that everybody can now execute this file. If we just wanted to make it so that we could execute this file, well, we know how to do that. I showed that in the chmod and permissions video, but now notice that test.sh is showing up in green, which means that we can execute it. So now we can execute it with dot slash test.sh. And when we do that, notice we get two print lines out here. We get hello world and hi, which is exactly what we wrote in the shell script. So that is the basics of shell scripting, but now let's show some more things that we can do inside of here. Uh, and again, this is not going to be an exhaustive tutorial. I'm just giving you an idea of how to run a shell script, what a shell script is, and basic stuff that you can do inside of it. But you always need to make sure that after you write your shell script, you give yourself permission to actually execute the script by adding the, uh, the execute permission to your user or to all users that have access to the file. All right, so we have our two echoes. Now, what else should we do? Well, let me show you how we actually implement a function inside of a shell script. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar with functions. Uh, if you're not, uh, they're pretty straightforward. You'll probably understand how they work. 
but I'm going to say, uh, actually, why am I calling this today? I don't know. Let's call this uh, print, okay? We're gonna put two parentheses and then open some squiggly brackets. And this is how you make a function in a shell script. So you put the name of the function, two uh, parentheses or brackets, whatever you wanna call it, and then open up these curly braces here. And then inside of this function, usually you tab in or one, two, three, four characters uh, inwards. You don't have to have this indented, but usually that's convention. Then you can write whatever you want to happen inside of this function. So I can say echo, and then uh, let's just say called function exclamation point. And then what I could do is I could call this function. So to call this function is how you would assume we just write the function signature like that. And well, we can use it many times. So now we're calling this function four times. And yeah, let's just give this a shot. So now let's escape and let's run this file. And we see we get a syntax error and that is totally my bad. I just made a small mistake here. We actually don't have the parentheses when we call this function. Sorry, this is my bad. I don't know why I added these, but we can remove these. And if we just call the function like this, this should work now. So now let me escape. Let's run this. And now we can see that we called the function. So when you call the function, all you have to do is just write the name of the function. You don't have to actually put the parentheses afterwards. Now, let me show you how we can pass arguments to our functions or how we can, you know, handle parameters and stuff. So remember that when we were talking about environment variables, the way we accessed them when we were, say, printing them out was we used the dollar sign. Now, inside of the shell script, this is the exact same thing. Whenever we're accessing variables, even ones that we've defined inside of this script, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, we use the dollar sign to access them. So let's say I wanted to pass something to my function here. What I would do is I would simply write after the print uh, function call, whatever value I wanted to pass. So I could say print and then Tim is great like that. Now I could pass this as a string if I wanted to pass this as one argument, but if I wanted to pass multiple arguments, I want to pass Tim then is then great. I would do it like this. So every time you want to pass multiple things, you separate them by spaces. If you just want to pass one thing and say it's a string, for example, then you would have to put this inside of quotation marks. Now I'm kind of assuming you guys have some understanding of programming. So that's why I'm, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff here, but let me show you now how we would actually print this out. So we're passing some value to our function. Now, how do we actually get that value from inside of our function? Now, some of you would assume that we do something like this, right? That's actually not what you do. If you want to get the value that is passed to a function, you use dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and all the way up until the number of values that you pass to this function. So in this case, we're passing one value to this function. So the first parameter is going to be identified by dollar sign one. Now, if we wanted to access the second parameter or the second argument, that would be dollar sign two, right? So that's kind of the idea here. So let me just show you this. I'm going to say echo and then called function. And then inside of this string, I'm going to put a dollar sign. We'll go like that. And then we will put number one. So now what this should do is print out whatever we pass to it as argument or parameter one. So let's run this now and we see that we get called function and then Tim is great. But for all of the other ones, it didn't pass anything or nothing showed up because there was no dollar sign one. So that is how we pass parameters or arguments or whatever you want to call it to the function. We use dollar sign one. And then just to show you an example here, let's say we were to print one, two. Now, if I say dollar sign one and then dollar sign two, I now will be able to access both of those values. So let's run this and we see that we get called function one, two. We passed both values to our uh, to our function. All right. So let's go back inside of here now. That's the basics of functions and how you pass values through. Now let's describe how you make a variable. So making a variable is really easy. All you do is you type the name of your variable. So let's say X equal sign without a space and then what you want it to be equal to. So in this case, we can say, you know what, let's say X equals six. That's all you do when you want to make a variable. Now, typically when you're making these variables or sorry, not typically when you're making these variables, you cannot have exclamation points in your variable names. You cannot have spaces in your variable names and you usually do not want to start your variable names with numbers. Now, I'm actually not sure if you can or cannot start your variable names with numbers, but the convention is just to use text. Uh, you can end the variable name and number if you wanted to. And if you needed to use a space, you would use an underscore instead. So say I wanted my variable Tim is great. Then I would go Tim underscore is underscore great, just like you would in most programming languages. So let's say X equals six. 
And now after we do all our calls to the print function, what we can do is we can say echo and then dollar sign and then X. Now this is going to access the X variable and print that out. Now I might have made a small mistake here, but let's just run this and see, because if I made a mistake, well, that'll be a good learning opportunity. But let's get out. Let's run this and notice that now it does indeed print six. Now, the reason I had thought I made a mistake was because I thought you might have to put that dollar sign inside of a string. Uh, but it turns out that you do not. You can just access the variable directly and it will print it out. So let's go back in there. So now what I'm going to show you is how to implement control flow. So if else, elif, all that. And then I'm going to talk about something called exit. I'm actually going to start with exit because this is pretty important. Every time you have a Linux process or a Linux script or whatever it may be, when it finishes running, it has an exit code. Now, by default, that exit code is just going to be zero, which means, you know, this was successful. But it is good practice in your shell scripts to implement your own exit codes just to make sure it's very clear that, hey, this script uh, finished successfully or no, this script failed. Now, there's a bunch more exit codes as well. I'm not going to really go through all of them. But all of this is to say that when you end your script and all was good, you exit with the code zero. Now, whenever your shell script hits this line, it hits exit zero, it immediately stops the script, stops processing everything, and then returns this code to whatever called it. Now, it's, it's a bit more advanced than that, but that's kind of the basics. And if you exit with code zero, that means that everything was successful, script went well. If you exit with code one, that meant that there was a failure in the script. So you're telling whatever called this, hey, this script failed. So just keep that in mind, exit code zero, success, exit code one, failure. So say you have some exception that gets raised in your program, or you just want to all of a sudden exit out of the program and tell them, hey, you know, this failed. You would just write exit zero. Now, in fact, I can kind of prove this to you. Uh, even we can do exit one as well, but inside of this print statement, if I type exit and then let's just go with zero, which means success. After I call this print statement the first time, the script is gonna end, it's gonna stop running. So we won't see the output afterwards. All right, so let's run this script and notice that we call this function one time and then all of a sudden it exits. So now let's just see what happens when we go with exit one instead of exit zero, just to show you. So we'll change the exit code and then rerun this. And you know, same thing happens. We don't see that the exit code was one or a zero, but if you were running this from another script, you would be able to check what that exit code is. Uh, and there's some other more advanced things. But anyways, when you see exit or when you write exit, it will just stop the script immediately. Uh, and that's good to know. All right, so I'm back. Something went wrong with my screen recording software, so I had to restart. But notice that I've emptied my bash script. Now what I'm going to show you is if, l if, and else statements. So these are pretty straightforward, and I just want to make it clear that I'm not going into a ton of depth here. I'm just showing you kind of some working knowledge. This is not discussing how everything works on a low level. Again, I, I could spend a whole tutorial series talking about bash. So this is just a high level overview. Anyways, let's write a function here. I'm going to show you how we can implement if and else statements. So I'm going to say control and then I will open my parentheses and inside of here, I'm going to write my first if statement. So I'm going to say if and then I'm just going to first of all, end this if statement with fi. So whenever you write an if statement, you need to end it with fi. Now fi will go at the very end of your entire conditional block or entire control statement block. So in this case, we just have an if statement, but we also could implement and l if. So let's go here. We could say l if like that, and then we could say else as well. So just keep that in mind. You can have if, else, and l if. I will show all of them in one second, but you do need to end the entire conditional block with fi. All right. So we have if. Now, if we want to write an expression or a condition to be evaluated here, what we do is we use a double set of uh, square brackets like this. Now, I'm not going to explain why we're using these square brackets, but what this does is evaluate an expression. Now, there is also another way where you use single brackets, but double brackets are kind of the standard right now. And it, for our purpose, they just make more sense. So you can look that up on your own. I don't want to talk about it anymore, but we'll use the double set of brackets. Now, inside of the double set of brackets, what we can write is an expression. Now, there's a ton of different expressions in Bash, and you can do things like check if file exists. You can compare strings for equality. You can perform arithmetic operations and check if two numbers equal each other. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. But I will show you the most basic comparison, which is just comparing two strings. So what I'm going to do is say number one, which is going to be our first parameter is equal to notice that I have a space here and that I have a space between my first bracket and then whatever string I want to check if this is equal to. So in this case, I'll say Tim. 
So what I'm doing is I'm checking if the first parameter past this function is equal to temp. Then the syntax here is a semicolon to end your condition or end your expression. And then you type then, and then underneath here, usually indented, but doesn't matter. You type what you want to happen if this is the case. So I'm gonna say echo, and I'll just say Tim is great, exclamation point. Okay, so that is our first if statement. Let's show how this works. I'm going to call control and I'm going to pass Tim and then I'm going to call control and I'm going to pass Bill. All right, so I save the file. I'm going to exit and I'm going to run this. And then notice we get Tim is great, but it only happened once because of course the second uh, call to control that we did was false, right? The if statement didn't run. Okay, so let's clear that. Let's go back in. And now let me show you how we do else. So this is pretty intuitive, but to add an else, you quite literally just type else. And then underneath the else, you type what you want to happen if the condition is not true. So I'll say echo, um, Tim is not great, exclamation point. All right, so let's run this now and notice that we get Tim is great, then Tim is not great. So the if ran and then the else ran. Okay, so now let's do this again. I will show you the elif. Again, very straightforward. And just like in other programming languages, you can have as many elifs as you want. So you can say elif, then you write your condition, put your semicolon, and then put the then. So now let's actually check a second parameter. So let's say number two is equal to, and let's go with Joe. And now let's call control. So we'll say control and we'll go with Bill and then Joe. So now we should hit our elif in this last control call. All right, so let's escape and let's run this. And oh, we got an issue here, syntax error. Uh, unexpected token else. Let's go back in here. What was incorrect? Ah, well, I forgot to add something to do in our LF. So let me just add something. The reason we were getting an issue is because we didn't have anything after the then. And well, we did, we had else, but that's just the incorrect format. We need to have something to do in the LF case, right? So now what I'm gonna do is say echo, and then we'll just say jump. All right, so now let's run this. And just, yeah, all is good. We get Tim is great, Tim is not great, and then chill. Okay, so that is if, elif, and else. Again, you can have many more elifs as you want. Just make sure that you start with an if and that you end with fi. Okay, so that was pretty much all I wanna show you. One last thing is how you get console input. Now, this is actually pretty straightforward. The command is very intuitive. It's actually called read. So what I'm gonna do is show you how you can get input from the user and then how you can print out that input. So let's say you want to get uh, the user's name or something. What you can do is you can type read. Now read pretty much means like let the user start typing. And then you can do hyphen P. Now hyphen P stands for prompt. So this means if you don't wanna just have an empty line that the user starts typing on, instead you wanna put something on that line. So say like name colon, and then the user gets to start typing. You would do hyphen P, you would do your prompt. So like name colon like that. And then lastly, you would put the variable name that you want to store the uh, the value that's typed in in. So I would say the following, I would say read hyphen P, the prompt, and then text. Now what this will do is store whatever I type in the variable text. So what I could do now is say echo and then dollar sign text, and this will simply print out whatever the user typed in on this read line. Now I understand this is maybe going a bit fast, but let's just run this and see how this works. So when I run this, notice it says name, I can type, let's type hello, and then it prints out hello because well, that's what we typed in. So really straightforward, you can add the prompt. You don't have to add the prompt. If you don't wanna add the prompt, then you just remove that hyphen P and the prompt. You put the variable that you wanna store this in. Notice that I didn't have to define this anywhere else. I just typed the name of the variable. Then you can access the variable later on using the dollar sign like we've done. So anyways, I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in another Linux for Programmers tutorial video.